uh, to class. My name is Sonyango Alan uh, uh, from Kenyatta University. I'm the one who will be taking you through uh, this course. And um, um, we hope that, you know, we get to enjoy this course. So I just wanted to have a recap of what we did talk about uh, last week on Friday. And um, I hope so that you guys are are doing my assignments. It's very important um, so that we are moving all of us at the same pace. It's, it's important. And so just to have a small recap of um, what we did last week. Um, I will take uh, the, the activity that we that I was demonstrating the last time when we met. I will take that and um, use it to uh, to do everything that we yeah just have a small recap of what we did talk about. Let me just let in someone here. Must be Leo leader. Okay, maybe at this point I can give you uh, a choice to to choose which one is it that you want me to 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 use to have a recap. We had two uh, last assignments that I did give you guys, and they are actually here. Okay, so guys, um, tell me. Which one can I have a recap with between this one and this one? Maybe the one you must have faced some difficulties. 291 and uh, 292. 292 is this one. And 291 is this one. Which one can I uh, use to just to recap what we did last week? 291. Good, 291. Thank you very much. Thank you. 291. Ah, thanks. You. Thanks. You. That's yeah. amazing. Correct. Correct. So let me do 291 for us so that we can be able to just see exactly how that is. So I'm going to uh, choose to zoom in it, zoom it in. So I just click the plus icon that is up here. And so it's a little bit bigger for you guys. So I know 291 needed people to be a little bit keen and curious. And so the first thing that I'll do in following the instructions, and the instructions were very brief. The instructions were saying, use a console connection to access the switch, each switch, each switch. So come down here, click on the lightning icon down here, then click on the console connection, and uh, put it on the switch and put it on the PC, RS-232, correct. Go back, pick another console, and... Uh, Put it on the PC. The order doesn't matter. Put it on the switch. And now I can now access the switches because if I click this switch, it's telling me it is locked. All right. And so is the second one. And by the way, when you are doing, you might have gotten different diagrams. Some of them are class A, some of them are building one, some of them for the PC, it was either student one, user one, it doesn't matter. The instructions could have been all the same. So having done that, let me now, you are told to name class A and class B switches. So I start with the class A, click PC, click PC, click desktop, click desktop, click terminal, click terminal, click OK. Wonderful, wonderful. This is uh, amazing. Once I do that, I'm now in the switch and uh, I can now do my job now here. So we we'll say enable here. Enter, say configure terminal. All right, and I do the first thing is to give it a name class hyphen A. So you say host name uh, class hyphen A. That is the name of this switch. And I press enter. I can decide to do all the other things on switch A, on switch, switch class A, and then I will go to switch class B later on. So the second instruction says, use the, the password AXW6K uh, 
password for all the lines. So the first line I will say is line console zero. I say password and I put the password keen enough, small x, fill a w, small w, that is six and then small k. Uh, then you say login. Then I exit here. It's actually optional to exit. I go to the second line, just line VTY, zero can say to 15 or to four. Enter. Then I say password. And at this point, I can give you another trick here. I could just use the up arrow key. Up arrow key, you use it to bring the previous commands you had entered. Because I know I'm using the same password for the lines. I'll just keep on pressing the up arrow key until I reach the password that I had put for the line console zero. And then I press enter. Okay. And then I say login. Say login. So you, the up arrow key is a very helpful command. It can help you to browse through the previous command you had actually put. The next instruction says use the password six capital E capital B capital U small p as the secret password. I need to get out of the line, go back to global and say enable secret and I put the password six uh, capital E B U uh, small p. All right, I have 13 marks now. Then I'm told to encrypt all the plain text password. I'm still at global. I say secret password hyphen uh, secret password hyphen encryption. Let me show you something here. Um, it is not required for you to know it now, but I'm just telling you the command line. You're not supposed to be a secretary in the class, but the command line sometimes using the tabs key on your keyboard, you can automatically complete some commands. So just by typing secret, oh, I think I wrote the correct, uh, it was supposed to be service, not secret, service. Then if I just type pass and I press tabs key, look at what happens, I press tabs key. Uh, oh, I think I wrote the name service wrongly. Uh, service, then I press tabs, write pass and then write tabs key, it automatically completes for you the command. That is very interesting. I can repeat that for you guys to see. I write service, then I type pass, and then I press tabs key on the keyboard, and it will automatically complete the command. That does not take away you know, your ability to master this command, because you need to master, not cram, you need to master the commands so that the commands are uh, you are mastering you know the commands without cramming them so i'm gonna press enter for there <coughs> excuse me then we are told to configure an appropriate message of the day banner say banner message of the day motd use any any um delimiter delimiting character uh -huh. Banner MOTD, then I can just say uh, this is a secure system. Violators will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law and put three exclamation marks there. That's my banner. And then I we're told to configure addressing for all devices according to the table. So because this is the switch, I need to give it its IP. I go to the table. Then you say the interface you can see there interface is VLAN one. I say interface VLAN one. Then you say IP address. 172.16.5.35 space to 
255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.
my secure system. Okay. The system has two. Okay. This is my secure system. Uh Utalala and Dani. All right. I mean, no one will penalize you. The system doesn't check the language. I mean, for the banner, and that is actually okay. And then um, we do uh, we do addressing now. So you say interface interface VLAN one IP address. The IP address for my PC class B is a. Uh, 172.16.5.40. So 172.16.5.40. Tablet mask is 255.255.255.0. We say no shutdown. No shutdown. All right. Uh, after that, we're going to need to save our work now. So I do control Z or the command end. Command end will work the same as. Um, uh, control Z on your keyboard, and we say copy. I was supposed to teach you some short forms as well. Most of these commands have actually short forms, but I want you to know the long forms first. Like the short form for copy, running hyphen config, startup hyphen config, you just copy, run, start. Look at that. Eh? Copy, run, start. That is the short form for copy, running hyphen config, space startup hyphen config. If I press enter twice, it's going to be accepted. Okay. And uh, once I do that, what I need to do next is I need to configure the PC here and give it IP addresses for student 2 PC. So it's 172.16. Dot 5.5.255.0. Tablet mask uh, is 255, 255, 255, 0. And that is it. And see, we already reached 100%. What is remaining is to test connectivity. To test connectivity, you come to the command prompt. So, like right now, like right now, uh, so, so right now we just go to the uh, command prompt here go to the command prompt and i click command prompt and now i want to test connectivity i want to test connectivity from student one, I mean student, this is student two. So from student two, I want to test if I can reach all these devices, okay? So student two will, will ping, we're going to use a command called ping. Ping is a command used for testing connectivity. Ping is used to test if one device can reach another device. Okay. So um, we'll ping PC class B switch, class A and student one. So we use the IP addresses here from the table. So we just type here, ping, and let's go to class B uh, IP address. We say 172.16.5.40. And I press enter. Let's see what happens here, guys. Uh, exactly. So long as we're able to get this reply, 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 because when you use the word ping, it sends what is, called, what is called an echo request, and you get an echo reply. It sends an echo request, and you get an echo reply. So you can see we got one request timeout. We will, I will teach you later on why do we always get the first timeout, and the rest are reply, reply, reply. But if I do it the second time, I will get the four of them. You can see that. It means that... Uh, let me demonstrate that in a minute here. Yeah, it's, it's accepting. So I can edit some, 
I can edit, um, yeah, edit filters. So I want to edit filters here, and uh, DNS, and then check all these other guys here. I'm gonna, this you guys, you're gonna learn later on. For now, I think it's important that uh, we just um, get to see what happened. This is another way of doing pinging. So I'm gonna come here and take um, uh, the simple PDU up here, look like an uh, an envelope. So I'm gonna click uh, that PC and I click PC one, for example, I want to ping the two PCs. So I come here and I click, yes. That's what is actually happening. When I ping, packets move from, or messages move from PC two to switch B, to switch A, and they go to student one PC, all right? And I can make them to come a bit faster. Switch A. And uh, to that device. And the next one, so you can see it's moving there, moving there, moving there. And you can see packets are moving at a very fast rate here. Okay. I could uh, just stop it. Once I stop it, I can actually delete it and start off again. So this is that is what we are doing on a simulation mode. I can come back to real time and do the pinging again. It's exactly what was happening there by doing what we are doing. Let me ping. Um, let me ping uh, class A switch, which is uh, the 35. The 35, and you can see 35 is also going to give us replies here. Let's just give it here. You can see the replies are here. We got at least uh, we got three replies and one timeout. I can repeat it, and now we're gonna get the, all the four replies. Okay. Let me ping now student one PC. And student one PC is at dot 50. So just do here dot 50. And I get all the four replies. You can be able to see that. Okay. So RP space dash A. You can see that all the devices are pinged here. This device in a table called ARP table, address resolution table, it has stored all the three IP addresses and what we call a MAC address. We're gonna talk about MAC address here. You guys are going to learn so many things here. So you can see the IP address and physical addresses, what we call MAC addresses, of all the other three devices have been stored in the ARP table of this switch here, of this PC, sorry, this is PC student one. And so I've added so many more things here, but you and I can see that we have achieved 100% MAC here. So if you made the mistakes at some point, just go over and, um, you know, and correct that particular mistake. Just go over and correct that mistake. This is something we're going to be doing, uh, like I told you guys. Now, at this point in time, I don't know whether, are there questions for me? Anyone, please just unmute and ask. I uh, can give you 30 seconds to do that before we talk about what we want to talk about today, because we want to introduce something very, very important for the sake of our learning. Any question, guys? Uh, uh, um, 25 seconds. Second. Yes, someone is waiting. Uh, Just ask your question. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, maybe just repeat about the concept of uh, configuring the line console and the VTY because yes. Uh, yesterday when I was doing the assignment, I didn't configure the VTY, but I it didn't uh, bring any. You know, I I achieved a hundred so. Can you maybe repeat about the concept? All right. Yeah. 
So uh, that's a good question. So to configure the line console and line bit Y, so we start with the line console. We just say line console uh, zero, enter. We say password and we put the password that we were given here for all the lines it was X equal A uh, W6K W6K then you say login those are the three steps of configuring line console and we have the same almost the same for line VTY you can put 0 to 15 or 0 uh, to 4 enter again you say password then you say login so for the line v and line console, guys, check that they have these three. They must have those three lines. You must say line console zero, and say password, put the password, login. Then you say line VTY zero to 15. You say password, you put the password, and you put login. These three, they, for line v and line console passwords, they have three lines, each of them. Get into the console line or v line, say password and put the password and then say login is that okay so does it mean if i if i don't configure the vty uh, it, it it will be accessible okay that's a good question also now we will be talking about later on how to configure ssh so the vty is only used to access the device when you are accessing the device remotely because the line console is actually used when you're using the console cable and console cable you use it to access the device is the device is here with you when the device is so many uh i mean very far away a distant away then you can't use the console cable because you don't have a console cable that can connect from where you are up to where the device is so you now reach that device over the network so the Line VTY password will only be required when you will be accessing the device remotely, whereby you know very well that line console is for user exec mode. Line console is for the user exec mode when you are accessing the device with a console cable. But when you are accessing the device remotely using either SSH or Telnet, the user exec mode password that will be required will not be line console, it will be line VTY. So both of them are, line, are for the user exec mode but depending on where you are connecting from. Are you connecting with the console cable when the device is here? You use the password for line console. Are you connecting the device remotely? Then the user exec mode password will be the one for VTY. The privilege exec mode password, the enable secret one, will remain the same for both of them. Make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Really good. I have another, I have a question too. Sure, sure, sure. So uh, please explain on the on the VLAN one. What does it do? Ah, ah. wonderful. Good questions, guys. Aha. Uh -huh. Now let me let me. You you are making me to um, answer this one very very early, but I can still do it. So let me put another command here. So VLAN. Let me first say. So IP interface brief look at this look at this yeah ladies and gentlemen look at this you know that um let me just expand this so that you can see this very well this switch contains so many interfaces here from number one first ethernet one first ethernet two all the way to keep on pressing enter you see the others all the way to first ethernet 24. These ones are called fast Ethernet interfaces. From number one to fast Ethernet 24, uh, they have a speed of 100 Mbps, 100 megabytes per second. Then we have two more interfaces called gigabit Ethernet interfaces. So gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 and gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 2. These ones are also two more interfaces. And these two interfaces are interfaces that I have a speed of one gigabit per second. That is all equivalent to a thousand Mbps, a thousand Mbps. So that, which means these two ports here have a higher speed than the, tw the first 24. 
That means, therefore, that they are called uplinks. When you want to connect your switch to the router so that all the traffic from all the 24 computers connected to these 24 ports, they can now just leave through one, only through one port going to the internet or to the router. And so these two ports are called uplink ports. They carry, they can carry traffic from several of the other interfaces. And then look at this. We have another interface here called the VLAN one interface. Now, VLAN one interface, uh, there are so many things to say about it. number one. The first 26 ports, 24 plus these two makes 26. Those first 26 ports, they are actually physical ports. What do I mean by physical ports? You can see them, you can touch them, you can take a cable and plug into them. Now, the VLAN one port is virtual. Actually, the word VLAN in full is virtual local area network, virtual local area network interface. So the VLAN is a virtual interface. You can't see it, you can't touch it, but why is it there? Unlike all the first 26 ports, these ports, you cannot assign them IP addresses. You cannot, because they are called switch ports. This VLAN one interface, which is virtual, it is the only one that can be assigned an IP address, and we just did. And it is used for remote management of your device. When you are logging into this switch remotely using SSH or Telnet, you will use the IP address of the VLAN interface. It is the only interface that can accept an IP address so that you can remotely manage this device. So it is used for device management for remote management of your device just to tell you more about it if i say show vlan beef show vlan vlan brief what are we seeing here we are revealing the vlan table the first in, the first command by the way was reveal, revealing a brief list of your interfaces the second command show vlan brief is revealing a the VLAN table or the VLAN database. We will talk about VLANs. A chapter is coming for it. But here is where we have our VLAN one, and the name is called default. Default VLAN is VLAN one. And why is it important? All the ports, port F01 to 22, G01 and G02, are all found under the VLAN one. Okay. And we will learn about. Why? Why must the switch have a default VLAN? That VLAN, you cannot delete it, you cannot rename it, it remains like that, and it is very important. So the first function you have learned today, it can be used to remotely manage the device, and it is not physical, it is virtual. You cannot plug a cable on VLAN 1. Uh, is that enough for now, sir? Yeah, it, it's okay. At least I understand what it is. Huh? Thank you. You're welcome. Any other question, guys, so that we can be able to move on? Please ask any questions. You people are the best students that you can ever be in Kenyatta University, and you are being taught by the best uh, teacher you can ever uh, find to be taught here. And um, I have no doubt in my mind we are going to go very far. Feel free to ask any questions. This is uh, the best thing that I do, and it's what I do best. And so I'm here to answer any questions. And I'm going to teach you guys the way you are never taught, even at your school, even in college, at the university. Here, this is not lecturing. We don't lecture here. We teach like other lecturers, but we train people here. We want you to get the skills. Questions? Can I assume that silence means no more questions and I move on? Yeah, I need to ask something. Uh, if, you, if you just give us uh, more examples, uh, there is, we just keep on doing those, uh, there is, we can be able to memorize because uh, we need also to get more examples which can be able to help us to memorize that. Did, did you finish the ones that I gave? Mm, yeah, we have done some. But there are some which I want you to finish. Yeah. Yes. 
Yes, I want you to finish them before I can give you any more. But trust me, more are coming on the way. Eh? Thank you. Karibu. All right, guys. So let's move on. Hello. Now, I want to... Okay, okay. Uh -huh. So to just confirm, uh, the, the process that uh, uh, I'll do in student uh, one is the same process I'm doing in student two. Exactly, exactly. It's everything, it's just the whole process, just that uh, from the password thing, that is the only part that is changing. No, all the passwords are the same. The only mm -hmm. thing that is different is the name. One name, the name of the class A and one name is class B. Otherwise, all of them, you give them mm -hmm. the same password for all lines and the same mm -hmm. password for secret password, yes. So it's only the host name that is changing. Exactly. Okay, thank you. Karibu. And if you want, did you see, did you see uh, this feature called the check results? Uh -huh. Yes, if you, if you put all the commands and you see there's a problem, come mm -hmm. at the bottom here, click check mm -hmm. results, and then click assess them items. Then you come mm -hmm. to this page here, look mm -hmm. where there's an X. Where there's an X, it tells you that is where you need to go and check. See, okay. currently I have all ticks. Yeah. yeah. All right, thank you. When you're yeah. done, you just close it and it'll take you back to the command. Okay. Any other question, guys? Uh, I mean, I want you guys to learn. I, I want you guys to uh, uh, know that you never came here to waste any time. And I'll give you everything that you need to know. I'm not selfish with the knowledge. I'll give you everything. Every, I want you, by the time you finish, you are my photocopy and you can do everything that I do. All right, so that's okay. I now want us to switch gears and um, start learning about how does the internet work? What are the protocols or the rules that you apply over the internet? What is the model that is implemented for the internet to work? That's what we want to talk about now. We will put aside configurations uh, uh, a little bit. And uh, we will now go to the how, the how, you know, what are the protocols? What are the models? And we get a comparison of them because this model is what is used to explain how the internet and how the network works. Because the internet is an example of the network. And so I'm gonna bring up my, my, uh, 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 my lecturing PowerPoints here. And we want to talk about protocols and models. Protocols and models. Uh, I hope that there's no one who is at the lobby so that we are not blocking them out. Yeah, I think everyone is here, which is good. All right, so let's get going. Let's get going here. I hope I'm opening, I've opened a PowerPoint here. I hope you guys are seeing it. You can see the PowerPoint, protocols and models. Anyone, please? Yes, yes, yes we can see it. All right, thank you. Thank yes, you guys. yes, yes. All right, all right. So you're gonna learn yes. about protocols. Thank you, thank you guys. We learn about protocols and models, protocols and models. And in this, we are going to talk about a couple of things here. Number one, we'll talk about the rules of communication and communication is just communication. Whether it's machine communication or it is human communication, communication is just communication. So humans, we call them rules. The machine calls them protocols, rules of communication. You remember during COVID-19, our Minister of Health then used to call them COVID-19 protocols. Those were just basically rules to keep people, you know, protected, you know, putting on your face, mask, face masks. I mean, we had so many online meetings, washing your hands. Um, I mean, uh, when you want to sneeze, you cover your mouth with your uh, uh, hand, um, you know, social distancing, so on and so forth. And so we also talk about what is called a protocol suit, which is just a group of protocols which work together to perform a, semi, a common function. We look at organizations because the internet does not belong to anyone. No one owns the internet. The internet is a public place, but even public places have rules and protocols. So we look at organizations 
which are vendor neutral and they regulate the you know the use of the internet then we talk about reference models we'll talk about five of them but two uh we will give um preference to two which are tcpip model and the osi model tcpip means uh transmission control protocol uh um, uh, stock ip internet protocol and osi is uh, open systems interconnection then we'll talk about something called encapsulation and we'll know what that is i'll try and use as simple language as possible and uh, we talk about data access by the way guys i think i didn't mention to you i my method of teaching or giving my teaching lectures here is that I use storytelling a lot. I use storytelling a lot, as you guys will realize, because I realize that some of the concepts are very complex. And I said, what if I become the best teacher that was ever there? And that is for Christians, uh, that was um, Jesus Christ. And for Muslims, it was called Isa. And so I use storytelling and parables you know, to teach networking. You might be asking yourself, how do you bring stories into science? You're going to find out how. And, um, and that is that. Oh, there must be someone in the lobby here. All right. Idris is in the lobby. OK. All right. So let's get started here and um, check out the rules. Now, all of us and known to us, uh, whether we use sign language or we use you normal know, language, human language, we have some rules, we must have some rules of communication and communication must have some elements. And so one of the elements of communication is that if all of us are talking at the same time, we are not going to understand each other and so there must be who is the source of the information. Like right now, I am the sender of the information. And you people are the receivers. And we can call me source of the information. And we can call you guys destination of the information. So any communication, there must be the source and the destination. Then now, how do we be able to pass a message from a source to the destination or from the sender to the receiver? We need a channel, what we are calling the <laughs> media. and if you remember very well, we did talk about three types of network media, and that was copper, fiber optic, and wireless. Copper, fiber optic, and wireless. And so that is what we call the channel. Now, all communications, whether machine communications or human communications, must be governed by some rules or some protocols, as I had already said. And so the rules will depend, you know, uh, different uh, protocols, so on and so forth. Now, some of the requirements for communication to take place, like I've said, one, we must identify the sender and the receiver. This is human communication. Right now, I'm the sender, you're the receiver. We must identify a common language, you know. If I started talking right now in French, some of you will be floating, you know. So it's important to know which language that all of us understand. And am I using good grammar so that guys are able to understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying that uh, I'm not saying things like I going or I'm 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 went or something like that. The grammar and the subject and verb agreement needs to be really well. Number two, I need to check on my speed of communication. If you listen to me carefully, you realize that I am talking in pauses. You know, I keep you can hear some commas, you can hear some full stops, you can hear like a whole paragraph, and I keep on pausing in between my words basically to regulate my speed so that I'm not talking in all words arranged in one line without spaces. And then of course the time of delivery, it's important for us to have a good uh, time of delivery so that, you know, um, time of delivery means I talk and then I wait for some time. And finally, of course, is the confirmation. Every, every communication must have I need communications. What is, uh, sorry, I need confirmation or acknowledgement. You've heard me ask you, can you hear me? You've heard me ask you to 
you know, ask me some questions. I want to ascertain or to confirm or to acknowledge that you guys are actually paying attention and you can hear what I'm saying. Now, moving forward, I want us to talk about this, you know, five things that we have here. Message encoding, message formatting and encapsulation, message size, message timing, and message delivery options. I start with the message encoding. Now, as I, as I, as I communicate right now, message encoding is actually putting the message in a certain format. Right now, as I'm talking to you, what I'm actually doing is that I am communicating, we are communicating through uh, the Microsoft Teams, and you can hear my voice in terms of, you know, your ear is registering the vibrations, and then on the vibrations on the ear, you're actually able to, you know, get the sound waves and you get to hear what I'm saying. So every message must be encoded in a pattern, certain format. If it's sign language, then someone needs to be signing. If it is text messaging or, you know, phone calls or video or something like that, that is message encoding. Then message formatting, the messages need to be in a certain format. For example, when you write an email or you write a letter, is one of the uh, formats. When you write a letter, you must write the letter in a full scope. Then the full scope need to be in a certain structure. All right. I start with my address. I go with the recipient's address. I put a date somewhere there. Put greetings, like dear so and so, dear sir, dear madam. I put the reference, you know, the subject. Eh? Then I have the body, and then after the body, I have the, you know, the salutation down there, and then I have to fold this full scope and take the full scope and put it in an envelope. And on the envelope, I still gonna put the destination uh, address, the address of the recipient. And I can also put my own address so that if it's not delivered at the destination, it can actually come back to me. Now, message timing. As messages are being sent over the internet, you know, computers are sending messages over the internet. The messages are always in small size. If it's an email, it's divided into small units and then it's forwarded across the network medium. Okay. If it is video, it's actually put in smaller sizes. It's whether I'm pushing the whole message as a whole, you know, it might have problems, you know, being sent to the destination. Then message timing, it's important. For message timing, I need you to note that as computers are communicating through the internet, the messages are the devices are able to sense that the message has actually reached the destination okay within a specific time time interval so it's important to note that you know how long a message is again taking to move from a source to the destination okay from one computer to the other that's why when the messages are taking longer that's when you feel you know you realize that there's some slowness on the network because this that slowness it means messages are taking long to move from a source to the destination and it's taking long for the delivery options this one we have not talked about it we have two de three delivery options we have unicast we have multicast and we have broadcast unicast multicast and and broadcast now unicast is what is called one-to-one -one communication one-to-one -one communication whereby Messages are moving from one person to uh, one person. So looking at my diagram here, look at this. So a message can be coming from this PC to just one PC. This is called unicast, unicast transmission. Then for, uh, 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 this is multicast. Multicast is when a message is moving from one device to some of the devices, not all devices. So from here, it can be going to here, or it can just be coming to here. Not all of them, just to some of them. Then we have, the last one is called broadcast, where you send a message from one person to everyone. Send a message from one person to everyone on the network. Those are uh, what you have. So that is oh, normally for IP version 4 network. We will later learn that IP version 6 also has unicast, multicast, 
but IP version 6 does not have broadcast. It does not have broadcast. It has it has what is called Anycast, and I will show you how does Anycast work. So IP version 6 has Unicast, Multicast, and Anycast. IP version 4 has Unicast, Multicast, and Broadcast. Unicast, Multicast, and, and Broadcast. Protocol suit. What is a protocol suit? A protocol suit is a group of protocols that work together to perform a similar function. So these protocols are always arranged in layers, and we have upper and lower layers. And this is why I want us to talk about some of these uh, protocol suits. We can see four here. The first one is called the TCPIP. TCPIP prot uh, uh, protocol suit or model, TCPIP, uh, which is made by a body, uh, body called IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force. Then the second one is it's called the uh, OSI, the Open Systems Interconnection. OSI is another model. And the last, uh, the last two are Apple Talk and Novel. These last two are actually a vendor. I mean, they are vendor specific, like Apple Talk was a model by Apple company. Novel Network is for the, from the Novel, uh, Novel company. So these last two were never implemented. In fact, they were because they were, they were proprietary. They were belong to a specific vendor. Now we will be talking so much about the first two. The TCPIP model, which is the one that was implemented in the internet. The OSI was never implemented, but you can't imagine that you cannot understand. You cannot understand. You cannot understand TCPIP if you don't talk about OSI. OSI has seven layers, and the TCPIP has four layers. So let's start by looking at the four layers, of course, of the TCPIP. We have the application layer, transport layer, internet layer, and the network access layer. Now, we will talk about those layers later on. For now, I want us to talk about this, this uh, that we have within each and every of these layers. I will talk, I will mention them each at a time. Don't be surprised if you can't master each and every of these protocols at a time. We want to start with those that we found at the application layer. Some of them will uh, sound familiar to you, and some of them might not. So under an application layer, we have a protocol under name systems. This is, uh, we have one protocol here called DNS, domain name system or domain name service. DNS is used to translate human readable names into IP addresses, human readable names into IP addresses. What I can do right now is that I can query my DNS server because again, uh, it's important you note that an internet cannot work without a DNS server address. So right now I want to query my DNS server and I'm going to give it domain names and it gives me IP addresses. I query different web servers. I put their domain name and they give me IP addresses. So let's see how this goes, guys. So I'm gonna open my CMD, which is actually my command prompt. And uh, this is my CMD. And I just write here, NS lookup, NS lookup. And once I write NS lookup, I want to query, I want to query the different websites. So let me start with facebook.com. Facebook.com. What is the IP addresses? You can see it has given me the IP version 4 address. IP version 4 address for Facebook is 102.132.135. And IP version 6 address is also here. Guys, I'm going to teach you about IPv6. This is what the world is implementing now. The world is moving away from IP version 4. So I'm going to teach you there. It looks a bit complex, but it is not. So you can see the IPv6 address here and the IPv4 address is here. Another one, I can take Facebook, uh, google.com. Google.com. 
you can see the one for google.com is here 172217 170.14 you can give me some from kenya here uh, hey. youtube.com and you can see youtube also has a version 4 and version 6 it tells you the transition that is going on uh, moh.go.ke and you can see there's a timeout. It didn't give me any. They are preventing me from knowing it. It's okay. Uh, Kenya Police. Dot go. Dot ke. I didn't get. I think I didn't get the name. Very well. Let me look at uh, ku. Dot ac. Dot ke. Ku. Dot ac. Dot ke. It's not recognized. Oh, it's because I I got out of NS lookup. Sorry. Ku.ac.ke. And there you go. Kenya police.go.ke. You can see the one for Kenya police. CI. Dot. Is it government? Ke. You can see the one for DCI is there. You can get the IP address of, these are web servers, by the way, web server of DCI. Uh, I hope none of you use DCI, because you don't know where I am anyway. Uh, Kenya Police, this is their web server, and that's the IP address of their web server. Please do not hack into their web servers if you have the skills. I'm just showing you this for learning purposes. Now, this is the work of DNS. DNS translates human readable names like dci.geo.ke, google.com into a particular IP address of that device. So the IP address is just another identification apart from the name. Now, the second one is called DHCP under host configuration. And we have DHCP version four and version six, and we also have Slack here. Again, I go back to my command prompt and I use control C to go back to uh, okay, go back to my PC and I say IP config space forward slash or forward slash or what is it? Look at the IP addresses that I have here. Let me zoom it so that you guys can see. And I'm being given this one because I'm using a wireless LAN adapter Wi-Fi. I'm on my Wi-Fi now. And uh, I have been given some details here. This is my physical address. That one is here. I'm not given. It comes with a device. Look at my Wi-Fi device is here. Now, of most interest to me is this one. IPv4 address. My IP address is 192.0.0.108. My subnet mask is here. When was I given this IP? On Sunday yesterday, my machine has not gone off since yesterday. Sunday, February 5th, 2023 at 6.32. This is when I powered on my machine yesterday. And it's supposed to expire. It will expire on Tuesday, tomorrow, February 7th, 2023 at 3.58 at 35 seconds PM. Then the default gateway or the IP address of my router is actually 192.68.0.1. The DNS server is this, the DHCP server is the same. And the DNS server is down here. Now, why am I telling why am I telling you all this? My computer gets these details automatically. And it's because my router also functions as a DHCP server. What is the function of a DHCP server? Look at it this way. You have 500 computers in your network where you work. You are the network administrator. Every morning, you're supposed your work is supposed to assign all the 500 computers with IP addresses. That is your job. You need to do that just before 8 a.m. when the other employees 
come to the uh, office to work. Now, one computer, you must give it the IP version 4, subnet mask, give it the default gateway, and give it the DNS. That's about four or five devices. Now, for them to power on, a computer will take about like three to five minutes to power on. You log into them, send them these IP addresses, four IP addresses. That will take like sometimes 10, 15 to 20 minutes for each computer. Multiply that by 500, you realize that for you to start giving all the 500 computers by 8 a.m., you must go to work yesterday. So that if you multiply 20 minutes by 500, 20 minutes by 500, two times 500 is 1,000, and 1,000 times 10 <laughs> is 10,000. Now, if you take if you take 10,000, you take uh, 10,000, and you want to take 10,000 divided by divide by let's say hours. You want to buy, divide by uh, 3,600. So because we are looking at hour, one hour has how many minutes? Uh, one hour has 60 minutes. So let's say divide by 60. So 10,000. If we divide that by 60, you'll get 166. <laughs> 166 hours. <laughs> so that is very interesting. Now, why don't people struggle with that? We do have normally a device within the internet, which is called a DHCP server. We call it a DHCP server. What is the work of that DHCP server? And DHCP actually means Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. It automatically assigns those addresses wherever someone powers on their computer, the computer is turned on. That device or that gadget is going to automatically assign all the computers, whether they're on Wi-Fi or on, wi or on cable network, they'll be assigned these IP addresses. And that is very important for you. And we have a server, DHCP, for version 4, and that is for version 6. And version 6 uses something called Slack, which I will teach you much later on. Let's go to email. When you want to send email, or every time you send an email, you're always using a protocol called SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. That is used for sending emails exclusively. To receive your emails, and to retrieve them, we have two more protocols here. POP3 or POP3. POP3 means Post Office Protocol, version 3. And IMAP is Internet Message Access Protocol. Internet Message Access Protocol. The two of them are used for retrieving, I mean, receiving emails. But one of them, when someone sends you an email and you have read it, it gets deleted from your server of the mail servers, you cannot see that email next week or next month or next year, all right? And that is POP3, just from the name Post Office Protocol. If someone sends you a letter through the post office, you go and pick that letter today. You cannot lose that letter, and tomorrow you go to the post office, tell them, can you give me a copy of that letter I picked here yesterday? Because they want to be having it. So IMAP is the one that stores a copy of your emails. After you read an email, you can still refer to that email tomorrow or tomorrow but one or next year on the next 10 years internet message access protocol let's go to file transfer protocol we have ftp file transfer protocol sftp secure file transfer protocol tftp trivial file transfer protocol these ones are used for when you want to download something from the internet downloading uh, a, a book downloading a document downloading a software, or uploading a video on YouTube, transferring uh, files, movies from one laptop to the other using the Ethernet cable. You use these protocols here, file transfer. Let's go to, of course, that includes sending your files on WhatsApp, you know. Let's go to web and web services. We have three of them. We have HTTP, which is the hypertext transfer protocol. HTTPS is the hypertext transfer protocol secure or secure can come first, SHTP, but that's not how it's called. And then we have the REST, representational state transfer. Now, these ones are used for 
interactions between a web server and a web client. That means when you open your browser and you want to browse something, when you're browsing something on the web server or on your browser, what you actually do is that you're always communicating with the web server and that's why you're able to read web pages, uh, anything you Google. Um, those are just some of the applications we find at the application layer. Let's go to the transport layer of the TCP IP model. We have only have two protocols at the transport layer. We have TCP, which is connection oriented. Of course, we'll talk about what is meant by connection oriented, transmission control protocol. And the connection less one is called UDP, user datagram protocol, user datagram protocol. Let's go to the internet layer, the internet layer. Uh, here we have at least three protocols for now. We have the internet protocols. We have internet protocol version four, internet protocol, internet protocol version four or IPv4, internet protocol version six or IPv6. And then we have internet protocol, uh, I mean version four and six. And then of course we have NAT, which is network address translation, network address translation. NAT, we'll talk about the use of NAT later on because it is one of the protocols we'll be configuring as well. Of course, we have ICMP. ICMP is for messaging. If you remember, we did use a command called ping, ping today. And uh, there are only two, we have ping and we have trace route. Of course, we will talk about them. They are under the messaging protocols, under internet communications message protocol because they're used to communicate within the internet. Of course, uh, ICMPv6 and uh, ICMPv6 ND, which means neighbor discovery. We will, of course, talk about them as well in IP version 6. Under routing protocols, we have so many protocols under routing protocols. We have OSPF, which is open shortest path fast. Open shortest path fast. We have EIGRP, enhanced interior gateway routing protocols. Enhanced interior gateway routing protocols. We have others like We have others like um, BGP. BGP is Border Gateway Protocol. BGP is Border Gateway Protocol. We have others like RIP. RIP does not mean rest in peace. It's a protocol which is um, routing information protocol. We have ISIS, which is intermediary system to intermediary system. Uh, so many, so many of them here that we will talk about. Finally, under the network access layer, network access layer under address resolution we have what's called the arp address resolution protocol arp under data link of course we have the ethernet protocol which we will talk about later on and wlan we must know about wlan because wlan is what we call wi-fi wireless local area network wireless local area network so these are the osi layers now i now want us to talk about the organizations that maintain standards within the internet. These are uh, open standard organizations. They encourage interoperability. What do we mean by that? You have a USB uh, cable, USB cable for a, a technophone and uh, one for a, a, a one for a techno and the other phone can be Samsung, for example. You can exchange the two USBs and use both of them to charge those phones, okay? Or you have a, a laptop charger for Samsung, and you can, or a laptop charger for HP, for example, or Lenovo. You can use it to charge another device. That's what we call interoperability if the ports are of the same size, that is. These organizations also encourage fair competition, fair competition, and they encourage innovation, all right? Of course, they are vendor neutral. They do not give preference to any vendor. And they are non-profit organizations, non-profit organizations. And they develop and promote the concept of openness. Now, we are going to talk about briefly each and every one of them. We have IEEE, which is uh, the Internet Engineering Task Force. We'll talk about much of it at all. We have already uh, talked about IUTF, the Internet Engineering Task Force. All right, we have IANA or IANA. 
IANA is Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. All those IP addresses and the subnet mask and domain names and MAC addresses, all of those are, uh, their location is managed by IANA. But IANA gets, you know, that particular role from ICANN, the Internet uh, Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, and so many of them. So let's talk about each of them. Uh, we have more like like ISOF, the Internet uh, Society, promotes an open development and evolution of the Internet. The IAB, Internet Architecture Board, Management and Development of Internet Standards. We have IETF, we already talked about, Development and the Updates and Maintenance of Internet and the, uh, its Technologies. We have IRTF, the Internet Research Task Force, long-term research related to internet and the TCPAP protocols, many more. We already talked about the ICANN, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. They could net IP address allocation and management of domain names, port numbers and all that. So then they coordinate, but the organizations that oversees and allocates them to the ISPs are the IANA, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. So. We do have many more here, of course, from IEEE. Any networking equipment, telecommunications like um, router switches, any energy equipment, and even healthcare, IEEE is the one that maintains the standards. The racks you see within networking uh, or server rooms, all those racks and, uh, uh, are actually uh, for, mount, for mounting network equipment, routers and switches are made using IEA or EIA, the Electronic Industries Alliance. We have the TIA, Telecommunications Industry Association. When you see those cell towers, the one you call boosters for Safaricom, Airtel, any radio equipment like the, the dishes, okay? Voice over IP phones and satellite communications devices, the standards are maintained by the TIA. Telecommunications Industry Association. Of course, we have the ITU T, the Inter International Telecommunications Union, Telecommunication Standard Sector, the IPTVs, broadband communications like DSL and all that. Now, now I want us to talk about these two because this is where you guys are going to get questions for your exam, and you are going to be asked so many things from this particular models. TCPIP is the one that explains how the internet works. But you can't understand TCPIP if you don't look at it through the eyes of the OSI model. Okay? Through the eyes of the OSI model. Now, let's go slowly here because this is important. Let's look at uh, this very keenly, with keen eyes. Let's start with the OSI model. You can see they have seven layers, seven layers. And I want you to note those. Uh, we are going to do comparisons and contrast. OSI, seven layers. TCPIP, four layers. TCPIP, four layers. OSI, seven layers. That is number one. Number two, OSI have numbers. OSI have numbers. You can see they have numbers. Oh, so someone needs to get in. Is it? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. So application. Application layers, seventh layer. Presentation, layer six. Session, layer five. Transport, layer four. Network, layer three. Data link is layer two. And physical is layer one. So seven layers, given numbers from down to up. Look at that. Not from up to down. Seven layers, numbers given from one to up. What is the importance of the numbers? Here is the importance. You can refer to the OSI layers by numbers. If you meet any network person and you tell them layer three, they know you're talking about the network layer. Tell them layer four, 
they know it is transport layer. Tell them layer two, they know it is data link. Tell them layer one, they know it is physical. So only the OSI can be referred to by numbers. Okay, you can use layer seven instead of the application layer. TCP IP, they are not uh, given numbers. They are not given numbers. So you must just call them application layer, transport, internet and network access. I hope you're noting that. The next thing is this. Look at, uh, look at the OSI layers. The last two or the first two layers from down, the first two layers from down, okay. Good. All right. Look at the first two layers from down, the data link and the fiscal layer. They are always combined together to form only one layer of the TCP IP network access. So this side, we have fiscal layer and data link layer. This side, we have the network access layer. For layer three of OSI, network layer, the other side, it is called internet layer. Okay, network internet. The only layer that remains the same on both ends and the functions are the same, the transport layer and the transport layer the other side. Very important. Finally, the last, the seventh, sixth and fifth layers of the OSI are again merged together to form the application layer of the TCP IP. So application presentation and session form the application layer of the TCP IP. So not those differences, which layer remains the same on both sides, a uh, network layer on, TCP, on OSI and the internet layer on the TCP IP, those layers have different names, but do perform the same functions. So the reason why for you to understand TCP IP, you must look at it through the eyes of the OSI is because you can never understand application layer if you don't talk about presentation and session. You cannot understand the network access layer if you don't talk about the data link and the fiscal layer. All right. Now, note the following. You'll be asked, which device is a layer two device? A layer two device is a switch. Switch is a layer two device. Which device is a layer three device? A router is a layer three device. A router is a layer three device. A switch, I was almost calling it a layer two switch, okay? Or the ethernet switch, because we have two types of switches. We have the layer two switch or the ethernet switch. Then we have what is called a layer three switch, which does the work of a router as well. And the other name of a layer three switch is a multi-layered switch. Multi-layered switch, it's because it works at both layer two and layer three. That's why we call it multi-layered switch, but it can do the work of a router. In fact, it does the work of a router so fast, like the switch, because the routers are slower than switches. Now, before we talk about encapsulation, I want you to understand what is segmentation or segmenting a message. Segment is the process of breaking a message into smaller units. We call it segmenting. You break the message into smaller units. You're browsing the web. You are, you are sending an email. You are on YouTube, uploading or downloading or just watching videos on YouTube. The messages are always broken down into small units for easier transmission over the network medium. Now, if the lady down here is browsing the internet or sending an email and the gentleman seated on the computer above there is also you know, browsing some uh, messages on the internet. Now, both of them will have their messages segmented into small units and all of them will be sent to the same link to the server here. We call the process of interleaving or sending different messages from of different types on the same network media, we call it multiplexing or interleaving, interleaving or multiplexing. Why do we segment? To increase the speed and to increase efficiency of transmission of the messages. I did talk, told you yesterday that we have two types, three types of messages, and these ones have not changed. 
We have voice, video, and data. Please don't say data. If you say data, that is mother tongue, you say data. Data is the correct pronunciation. Pronunciation, not pronunciation. The correct pronunciation. We have sequencing. Sequencing. Sequencing, after you segment your messages into small units, let's say it's an email and the email is divided into small units. How does the network make sure that when they reach the destination device, they are combined together into one full message again? It's because the network does what is called sequencing, the process of assigning numbers to each and every small unit, which will help in the, uh, it will help uh, in the reassembly because you disassemble, then you're assembling them at the destination device. So to reassemble them, you reassemble them using the sequence number. So the devices do that uh, a lot. Now, one other thing. We have seen our OSI layers, and the, there was the physical layer, then there was the data link layer, layer two. Layer three is the network layer, layer four is the transport layer, then layer five, six, and seven was the application layer. Let me surprise you guys. As messages are moving throughout the internet, the messages are always going through each and every of these OSI lay of these layers we are talking about here. And that's why we are, we are not talking about them for nothing. Okay? Each and every message, whether it is an email, whether it is an uh it's an email, whether it's video traffic, whether you're making a call, whether you're sending a text message or on WhatsApp, every message must always go through the OSI or the TCPIP layers there. And as it moves from one layer to the next, the messages are given different names. The message are given different names. Number one, when the message is at the application presentation and session, the upper three layers, the message is called data or data stream, data or data stream. Then from the application presentation and session, they move to layer four, which is the transport layer. And there we call it the segment, segment or TCP segment, segment, all right? From layer four, it comes to layer three and the message is called packet, packet at layer three, the IP packet, layer three, it's called the packet. Layer two, we call it a frame, frame, frame. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be asking you this every day, guys. So pay attention and I'll repeat. So layer two, we call it a frame. And when the message comes and it reaches layer one, the physical layer, it's now bits or bit stream. And the bits we are talking about here are bits of zeros and ones, bits of zeros and one, the binary bits. So at layer one, bits, layer two, frame, data link, Layer three, which is the network layer, packet. Layer four, segment, that is the transport layer. Layer three is the, of course, the network layer. So layer two is the, I mean, layer four is segment, the transport layer. And layer five, six, seven, data stream, data stream. So as messages move, and I'm gonna show you how, we must, the message has to pass through each and every layer. And as it passes through each and every layer, a new, I can call it an envelope, okay? A new layer is added on top and it gets a different name. And it moves to the next layer. Again, a new kind of envelope, you know, a new cover is put on it and it gets a different name. For example, let's look at this. We have a message moving from the server to the PC, the web client. So the web server wants to send a message to the web client, that is from a web server to your PC. Now, from the web server, it, of course, uh, the message is actually data at the application presentation layer and the session, layer 765, we call it data. When the message moves to layer four, a new layer is put on top of the data. A new layer is put on top of the data and we now call it a segment. We now call it a segment, TCP segment. 
on top of the data at layer four. Then it moves to layer three and a new a new covering is put on top of the segment and we call it a packet. The packet moves to layer two, data link, and a new cover is put on top of it and it's now called a frame or the ethernet frame, okay? Then it moves to the layer one and you know layer one is where we find the network media. Someone to mute, please. Layer one is called the network media, sorry, the physical layer. And there, the message is called now. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know who that is. Okay, that's okay. All right. Now, the process of adding one cover after the other, one cover after the other, is what we call encapsulation. All right. The process of adding a new cover, a new cover on top of the data, we call it encapsulation. And we are going to see the process of now removing one cover at a time. When the message, you know, the bits go in form of zeros and ones at the network media, physical layer. If it reaches the PC, the PC is going to de-encapsulate the bits into a frame, okay? Then it's going to de-encapsulate, remove the frame layer at layer two to expose the packet, remove the packet layer to expose the segment, remove the segment to expose the data, and be able to see the data on your desktop there as an e message, email, so on and so forth. That is called de-encapsulation. You remove the covers one at a time to expose the data, to expose the data. That is very, very important. Now, let's talk about uh, what is called addresses here. Now, for any message to be sent from one point to the other, from one device to the other, uh, there must be addresses. There must be addresses. And we have what is called IP address. IP address. We can also call it network address. Network address. Every message and the network address, by the way, is the layer three address. The layer three address. Every message must have a layer three address of the source device or the sending device to the and that of the destination device. Source IP address and destination IP address. Source network layer address and the destination address. Again, every message must have at the frame level, because the network address is found at the packet. In the frame, the, we must have what is called a MAC address, source and the destination
Hello. What will end up? What is your opinion? What happened? Maybe the Mwalimu Alipote is the internet. You never know. Maybe power, something like mm. that. Yeah, I think so. Because you made it too silent at once. Too. And then now, <laughs> with nothing showing. <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> I mean, I was wondering. I mean, I was wondering. I mean, I was I was wondering. I was wondering. I was I even your class in each of us. <laughs> oh, but in Ilkwa Mona laptop yaki na isha power. Mm-hmm. I, I wanted to tell him why power, but in the corner and I wanna it's good. Ah, yeah, that's a class in Aisha to Apo. Apo Apo. <laughs> Acha to body. Maybe maybe to own a WhatsApp come on as a kwame. Mm, I will turn. I come on your text, Bado. Mm. Mm. Let us wait and see. Yeah, nothing. I just text, Bado. Mm. Mm. Hey, but guys, let me tell you, um, I was in another class here, Mwali Mungine. Where? Hey, let's Kusema. Yeah, you know, yeah. Who's an Anajua? Hmm. I can I can confirm this because nearly attend class in Guinea for one week. <laughs> so we will be able to see what we can do. We will be able Thank God. I can't even look at it. I can't even Let me just call. See. Call and confirm. Can you get out? Speak up, Muski. What? Mwalimu? Nelson? Yes. I know you guys have lost me. My my internet has just gone, but I'm just trying to reconnect. We just have a uh, a few slides, like two or three slides to be done. Eh? Okay, we are wondering. Just, yeah, yeah. Just you can text them in the group that it's, I'm having some internet problem, but let them just give me less than five minutes. This will be done. Eh? All right, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Meskia, <laughs> the same thing. Uh, Meskia. So ni hilo neti me nini? Meleta shida.
Oh. Oh. Sorry, guys. Um, I got some small outage here, but I'm uh, eventually here. Let me just share. We are almost done. Uh, and uh, I just want us to get done so that we meet tomorrow. So let me just share my screen again. And, um, you know, we finish the little that is remaining. And that is here. We were, I was talking about addresses. And I was actually talking about uh, the network layer addresses and the data link layer addresses. By the way, can you hear me? Someone to confirm. Yeah, we can uh, hear you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So the network layer, I was talking about two types of addresses. One is for layer three, one is for layer two. The one for layer two, you can call it MAC address, call it data link layer address, or you can call it physical address. The one for layer three, you can call it network address, or you can call it IP address, and some people call it logical address. People call it logical address. And so it's important that every packet, layer three packet, must have a source and destination IP. That's the IP of the source device and IP of the destination device. Every frame must have source and destination data link layer address or MAC address. Don't worry. I will be repeating these things almost every time we meet. So that shouldn't worry you at all. Of course, you can see the logical addresses are here. You must have a source uh, and destination logical or layer three addresses here. Uh, uh, you can see that, you know, we, of course, we do have a packet here. And so this gentleman here is sending a packet to the server. And the server is right here. And he's sending uh, the message will be in form of a packet here. And the Mac packet must have an IP address of this PC, which is 192.168.1.110. And the IP address of the where the message is going, the final destination, and the IP is 172.16.1.99. And that IP must be on the packet, the packet here. So, like I was saying, a packet must have both IP address of the source and destination. And a, a frame, we as we will also be seeing, must have the source and the destination MAC addresses. Now, an IP normally has two portions. Every IP address, the 192.168.1.110. Part of it is called the network portion, and another portion is called the host portion. And of course, we will learn about more of those later on. Just know for now, an IP address has two portions. If it is IPv4, we call it the network portion and the host portion. If it is IP version 6, we call it the prefix and the interface ID. That is the equivalent names of the network portion and host portion. Now, uh, so look at look at look at uh, a packet which is inside a frame. Like I told you, when a packet moves from layer three, then it moves to layer two. So it means the packet it goes to layer two and it is covered with a frame, and it's now called a frame. Now, to learn about the source and the destination, I mean the the network portion, the host portion, you can see the network portion is in this color is yellow or orange. I don't know. Uh, yeah, the orange color, the orange uh, color, and that is the network portion, and the dot ten, dot ten is the host portion, host portion. Now my question is this, guys, we will done in a few. My question is, um, how do we know that two devices or two computers or two mobile phones? Are on the same network and how do you know that two devices are on different networks now to determine that if two devices have ip addresses and their ip addresses have the same network portion all right 192.168.1 then these two devices are on the same network even though the host portion will be different so long as the network portion is the same they are on the same network that means if the network portion is different, then those two devices are said to be on different networks. Okay. You can 
uh, of course, see that here. This PC here for this gentleman has an IP of 192.168.1.110, and the server here is 192.168.1.9. So they are on the same network because the network portion of the IP address is the same, even though the host portion is different. The MAC address is here, the layer two address, of course, there for that device. And here is the frame, and here is the packet, and here is the data itself. Of course, we will also be talking that about slowly. Now, I want to talk about one more thing here before we get going. And this one, I want you to be, if you have not been keen throughout, this is the time to be keen now. Now, something that is takes long for most of my students to get is this. Uh -huh. Look at this PC. This PC has an IP of MAC address of AA, hyphen AA, hyphen AA, and the PC has an IP of 192.1.10.110 actually. This PC is sending a message through the switch to the router, to the router here, to this router, to this router, to, to the switch, to the server here. This is the destination of the message, all right? And the server has an IP of 172.16.1.99. Clearly they're on different networks because this is 192.16.1, this is 172.16.1. Now, This PC will craft the mark, the, the frame, actually the packet first, and the packet will have a source IP of 1.110, and the destination IP for the server is 172.16.1.99. The MAC address will be, the source MAC address is for the PC. The destination MAC address, that's where the problem is now. Okay, now let me explain this, and please understand me as much as possible. When the message leaves the PC, and I'll, I'll request questions after this. When the message leaves the PC, it is going to the final destination, the web server, all right? I need you to note that every router interface has a different MAC address. Every PC has a MAC address. We don't count the switch here. I will talk about that much later. The switch is not uh, of focus here. So when a message leaves the PC, it's going to the server, it reaches the router through this interface here. Okay. And the MAC address of that router is 11 colon 11 hyphen 11 hyphen 11 all the way. So the message from the PC, the packet at layer three has a source IP of 1.110 and a destination IP of 1761.199. Now that IP is going to remain throughout from PC to router R1 to the next router to R2 to switch to the server. That is for IP. We cannot say the same of the MAC address. The MAC address changes from router to router. What do I mean? We know that this router has two interfaces. This one also has this one and this interface. Router R2 has this interface and this interface, and then we don't count the switch, you go to the device. So when the message moves from the PC to the router, the source MAC address is AAA, the destination MAC address is 111, which is for this router interface. This router R1 is going to change the frame details. Because the message reaches this interface here, saying that the source is PC, destination this interface, when R1 sends it to the next router here, the source MAC address will be for this router interface. The destination MAC address will be for this router interface. This router receives it, removes those MAC addresses, and puts the source MAC address as that of this interface, and the destination is for R2 interface. R2 receives the message, removes the frame layer, and puts in another frame, which has a source MAC address of this interface here and the destination MAC address will now be for the server, which is AB, hyphen CD, hyphen EF, hyphen 1, 2, hyphen 3, 4, hyphen 5, 6. So the MAC address changes from router to router 
the IP address remains the same. The source will be 1.110, the destination will be 172.16.1. Ninety-nine. So that is something I will still repeat it. Don't worry, but I want you to start absorbing that information as slowly as possible. Now, uh, one of the assignments that you guys will uh, be having today is on this. Let me just go to the browser so that I can show you where to find that assignment. Uh -huh. The assignment, uh, you can note down, uh, you can note down this assignment and please you put it on the WhatsApp group. The first assignment is just going to install, you're going to install this software called Wireshark. You're going to install this software called Wireshark. And Wireshark is a software that is used for network monitoring. It's used for network monitoring. Now, you'll install the, soft, the software called Wireshark and the instructions are here and you note down 397 by the way. 397 is the first assignment. If I open, click on it to open, you can see what happens here. It opens the PDF which has the link for downloading the Wireshark. So when you don't click on that link, when you click on that link, when I click on that link, just click continue to cite. So when I click on that link, it's gonna open the w, the wireshark.org and you're going to click download here, click download, and you're going to choose the one for 64 bit here. And you're going to choose the Windows installer, 64 bit, this one. Choose the Windows installer, 64 bit, download it once you download, you install it. After downloading it, you're gonna have to install it. Now, after you install it, let me open mine, it's already installed. You are going to learn basically how to use the Wireshark. So mine is here and you can see it's opened already. It opens like this. And you're supposed to see, choose, like right now me, I'm using Wi-Fi. So I select Wi-Fi, I can double click on it or I can just select it and I click on the blue icon, which tells me start Wireshark, start capturing packets. So I, let me just double click here. Look at what's happening here. Wireshark is right now capturing all the packets that are currently being transmitted on this network. You can see we have so many UDP under the protocol, under the protocol here. We have more UDP packets. Why? Because currently we are having a lot of voice traffic. I'm talking and you can hear me and you are viewing the packets of this particular screen through the network. So there's a lot of voice traffic and video traffic as well. Okay. And that is why we have so many UDP packets here. Now, any browsing that I'm doing, so Wireshark is actually capturing. This ones are, this is real time packets. These are the packets and you can see these packets are going to almost one destination device, okay? My IP address is 192.6.0.108. You actually saw it today. And I can, of course, display it here. You can see 192.6.0.108. It's here. That is my IP address of my PC. And they are being sent to the WebEx server. I mean, this is called the, the server for the Microsoft Teams, which must be 52.114.113.196. You can see there are so many, so many here. Packets going to that particular file server as they're being stored there okay and uh, some of the packets uh the more descriptions are actually here and there's a lot of you know tcp three-way handshakes so on and so forth which we will learn later on so normally wireshark has two um wireshark has two layers i cannot see one of the layers here i am not able to see one of the layers here i don't know why uh huh. All right, all right. I'm not able to see one of the layers here. I don't know what is wrong. Uh, one of them is actually not here. Let me just see. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, they're actually here. 
Yeah, this is normally supposed to come. I think this is a, a new version of Wireshark. You can see frame is here. You can see the Ethernet 2 is there. You can see the Internet Protocol version for IP addresses are here and so many details here. You can see UDP, User Datagram Protocol is here with some port numbers there. You can see what is called the data itself being transmitted, which is actually right here. So this is actually the TCP IP protocol is being captured here, but this particular Wireshark and this East African time and all that here. This packet will have, of course, the source IPs and the destination IPs, of course, will be right here, 108 to 113.196 here, so on and so forth. I'm running so many packets here. I'm on YouTube, I'm on email, so many, so forth, and so like that. So this is uh, Wireshark. Now, after you install it, before you see what I'm seeing right now, after installation, guys, then I need you to go to, that was a 397, then go to 3710. 3710, and you are now going to be taken through the process of using Wireshark to view network traffic. You're going to do exactly what I'm doing, okay? And so you, you don't need any other equipment. You will just need your PC connected to the internet, of course. And uh, you're going to do all these things. Commands you're given here, IP config forward slash all. You're going to do some pings. Just follow the instructions to ping an IP address there. And you'll be going to even be given what you should expect when you do all those uh, screenshots. So do this. You're even going to do uh, to ping domain names because you can ping a domain name like cisco.com, like gmail.com. You can also ping an IP address of you know google.com, so on and so forth. You know. So uh, this is and you're going to have some reflection questions there, and you have a second part of this. So this is the assignment you guys are going to be doing. 379 and 3710. Those are the only ones you have for today. Now, for subsequent days, that is tomorrow, which is Tuesday. Tomorrow we are still meeting, same time, same place on this platform. We will now start talking about the different parts of the OSI layers. And we'll start with the lowest layer, which is the fiscal layer. And under the fiscal layer, we'll just talk about the network media, where we'll talk about the copper media. We'll talk about the fiber optic cable, and we'll talk about the wireless media and copper, fiber optic, and wireless. That's we're going to be talking tomorrow. So please come early, be punctual, and uh, that's it. Otherwise, that's the end of today's uh, class. And um, sorry for the interference, by the way. And at this point, do I have any questions from you guys? Any questions before we get going? I will, uh, of course, send you guys the recording later on through your emails. I think you will even be notified. The email will notify you. So if there's no another question, let's meet here tomorrow, 5.30, and we pick up from where we left. We start talking about the OSI layers. Others, thank you very much, guys, for coming. And um, you have a good evening, guys. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mario. Thank you, guys. Bye, you too. Bye. Have a even have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mario. Karibu.